When you think digital nomad lifestyle or remote work, you probably think about beach bars, cozy cafes, sunny weather, adventure of a lifetime. You probably don't think about your car breaking down somewhere in the middle of a highway in Madeira, or stepping on a sea urchin in Mauritius, or getting a rare bacteria in Kenya. Yet, all these things happened to me in the last years of frequent travel and remote work. This video is a collection of everything that turned out to be indispensable, a total game changer or lifesaver, divided into a few categories. Safety, internet and work, packing, money and budgeting, health, fun and experiences. I focus on things that I now consider non-negotiables but that are not total basics, so I won't be covering things such as Google Maps, Google Translate or Revolut, cause I know you guys know all this. Okay, so you rent a car and it's like $100, but then they add insurance and it's like 300. It feels like a legal scam. I mean, who pays for that? And then there's this most relatable feeling when you give back the car and nothing's wrong, but still you feel this pang of anxiety and you wonder if you'll be charged a fortune. That was me for years because I never wanted to pay the horrendous insurance fees. And then I learned that there are companies that offer annual car rental insurance that costs between 50 to 100 US dollars and it covers you wherever you go. But there are different companies that offer such schemes depending on where you live. In Ireland, I use AIG and now in the UK, I have another one. One, and both were tried and tested and one of them literally covered everything as we crashed our rental in Madeira. It is a really cost-effective option and if you change your location a lot, the stress that it takes away is just priceless. For years the default with my digital nomad lifestyle and my medical history was a story of constant struggle and compromise. I only went to doctors if things got really bad, like when I had the sea urchin accident in Mauritius or when we thought my husband might have dengue fever in Kenya. Usually it was a moment of stress, wondering how much is it all going to cost? And then things such as regular checks, my chronic conditions or therapy were done out of pocket, on, on and off basis, or once a year when I went back home for Christmas. I felt like running between doctors from the dentist to blood test to physio really took away this precious time with my family back home. This year it finally won't be the case because I learned about Safety Wing who recently launched Nomad Health and kindly partnered with me for this part of the video. What I really like about their product is that it was designed by digital nomads for digital nomads and the way the plant is designed you can clearly see that they know our needs and struggles. So Nomad Health is a comprehensive medical plan that will ensure you in over 175 countries including your home country and you can get treated at any licensed clinic or hospital public or private with coverage up to one and a half million US dollars per policy year that could include anything from hospital stays surgeries at home nurse care routine dental cancer testing and treatment and specialized treatments and even acupuncture they have 24 7 live chat and global emergency phone support so no matter where you go you can always get in touch this is certainly the most holistic comprehensive and global medical plan for the digital nomads that I know of. So if you're traveling long term, working remotely or looking for a global health insurance plan, do check them out. The link will be in the description box. Moving on to personal safety, before you go somewhere, research your destination, check the crime rate, safety precautions, etc. because this can influence how cautious you should be. You can also use Citata Travel Site, which is an app and a website that offers real-time safety analysis, and it also has local emergency phone numbers and locations of hospitals. Also research for common scams of your destination, for instance in Barcelona you have those people who are walking behind you and they're pretending they're on the phone but actually they are pickpockets. In New Delhi, you could have overpriced tourist packages or in Bangkok you could have those took to drivers who offer to take you on a tourist roundabout but actually it's really overpriced. So yeah, knowing these things can save you time and money. Another thing that goes for pretty much everywhere, don't flash your gear unnecessarily, try not to take out money from ATMs after dark and try to book your accommodation in safe areas. Safety really is priceless. And if you're traveling alone and if you feel a bit insecure walking somewhere, you could use Live360 app which allows your friends and family to track you. And if things went wrong, it has live emergency dispatchers. So in terms of digital nomad priorities, safety first, internet second. That seems pretty fair. Whenever you want internet right away when you land without having to go and buy a SIM card, you could use an eSIM, which is a virtual SIM card that you use alongside your normal SIM and you install it on your phone through an app, for instance, Aerolo. It is certainly not the most cost efficient method, but if you know that internet will be hard to access, for instance, going to India, I knew that to get Wi-Fi at the airport you need Indian phone number. In such cases, it could be useful. Also work from 
Chrome allows you to browse cafes, giving you information on whether they have plugs, Wi-Fi, etc. It's not the most exhaustive, but definitely can be of use. I also use speed test to test internet speed, and that's particularly useful if I want to decide if I want to rent a room somewhere or join a co-work. So as digital nomads, we carry our life's work with us very often, so make sure it's safe, copy it in disks. The disks are encrypted in case they are stolen and you have some cloud backup. You can easily encrypt your disks for a Mac using FireVault, and for Windows, I think it's device encryption. When packing, go by the old saying, if you want to travel far and fast, pack light. I usually pack approximately 75-80% to 80 of my capacity, and that's because as I travel, my things get messy and they tend to take up more space, and also I like to get some things locally. One absolute game changer for me here was having packing cubes from Amazon that help me fit more things and keep things more organized, especially when I have a backpack. Also, if like me, you keep forgetting things, you could use Packer that automatically generates a packing list based on information that you give it, but you could also use AI tools such as ChatGPT or BART. Just a final reminder, keep a copy of all your essential documents. I always negotiate the price of my accommodation based on two important factors. How long I'm going to stay and whether it's high or low season. Usually if I stay somewhere over a month, I ask for a discount. Also apps such as Airbnb or Booking have their own premium added to it, so it's worth checking whether the accommodation you're interested in have their own website. Also you could check co-living websites which also have pretty good deals. You can also track your expenses using an app, for instance Travi Pocket or Monify work in a very similar way, they're free to use. You set your budget and then you add your expenses. At the end you can see summary by expense type and yeah I think it's a great idea to always stick to a budget. It is a good practice to always have some cash when leaving the airport unless you really know that the country operates with cards. This way you can avoid the hopeless situation I was in when in Mexico I was stuck on a highway in the middle of the night and you could only pay by cash that I didn't have. I'm telling the full story in my Yucatan Peninsula guide so check this out if you want. We kind of touched upon it in safety, but I think health is so important, we need another chat here. Make sure to take all health precautions, check recommended vaccines, take probiotics two weeks before your trip and during, especially if it's somewhere new and exotic you've never been to before. If you think it may be hard to access good drinking water, take with you rehydration tablets, tablets that purify water, or a bottle that purifies water. Everything will be linked in the description box. Also, don't neglect your mental health. Just because you're traveling or working remotely, it shouldn't come secondary. Being always on the move can be stressful. It can feel alienated to be without the support network of family and friends back home, so it's important to have something to fall back on. And here I'm very happy to say that Nomad Health reimburse therapy, which to me is key when picking a medical plan. And finally, some little things to hopefully add a bit of joy to this otherwise highly logistical and rational list. I've been using Bin, which helps you track the countries you've been to, the countries you lived in, the percentage of the world that you've seen, the countries you want to go to. Also, Polar Steps takes data from your phone to create visual diaries of your journeys. And finally, Atlas Obscura can help you discover little quirky things to do and see when you travel. Okay, my young Padawan, I feel like I fully prepared you. You are ready to go and travel or work from wherever you want and any challenge that may arise, you will meet it with confidence, I hope. If there are any tips that you think I should add, please let me know. Otherwise, I wish you happy travels and go and get lost in admiration.